Hi. Um, so that's what I'm talking about today. The um, slide two. So it's the interaction of accommodation and sort of sediment supply that, that generates the stratigraphy in rift basins. And previous work's been focused on the tectonics. There's a, a lot of work on that, on how that generates accommodation, but Badlands let us combine, combine that with how sediment supply in an evolving landscape interacts with accommodation to, to do that. So I'm doing this work in the Otway Basin in Southeast Australia. Uh, it's got a lot of data to help build and constrain the Badlands models. And it's also an area that's um, undergoing active exploration at the moment for petroleum resources. Uh, so the model that I'm building, I, I initiate uh, with a synthetic topography. Uh, there's a constant subsidence between that's in between five and 25 million years. And that subsidence is all the deformation is based on the interpreted structure of the, the Sinrif late Jurassic to early Cretaceous crayfish subgroup in the Otway Basin, which is the essentially the early Sinrif sequence there. So I'm, I'm also needing to do a lot of, or not a lot of, but a, a, a bit of, uh, I guess, pre-processing on the Badlands model. So once the model's complete, I have to work out how the sediment's routed from its drainage basins and into the depot centers. I've developed a workflow that analyzes the Badlands outputs, focusing on the catchments and where they connect to the rift depot center and how the erosion and deposition within each of these catchments varies over time. So, on this left hand side, I've got a catchment refinement, uh, a slice of, of one, a time slice where one of I've refined the catchments. Uh, and these are classified based on where they drain into that, that main depot center or the, the outline of the rift center there. So this, this middle map here is a, uh, another post processed output. Uh, so with Badlands, it normally outputs uh, a cumulative erosion and deposition. This is uh, an interval erosion and deposition. So it's the, uh, the erosion over a 100,000 year time step and deposition as well. Oh, sorry, it skipped ahead there. Uh, so from these, I'm able to go around, I'm able to create plots of the area in this upper plot here of, of just how much area is in each of these sub basins, but also subdivide that down into how much erosion and deposition is occurring in each of those, in each of these things, and what the difference is between these things as well. So the, the difference between erosion and deposition is essentially what's delivered as a sediment supply to the, to the depot center. So this is just a, a short animation. Uh, in this, I've, I've added the, um, just showing what how these work. Uh, so this is showing the change in, change in these things over time. And you can see this erosion front around the edge, eroding into the pre-existing landscape. Next slide. There we go. So at the moment, what seems fairly apparent is that there's three stages in the landscape uh, in evolution. There's this early stage with a limited drainage network and connectivity. Depot centers generally have a high accommodation to sediment supply ratio. The mid in the mid, the erosion front moves away from the edge of the depot centers. There's higher sediment supply and a good connectivity between the landscape and those depot centers. And in the late stage, the sediment needs to traverse a larger distance to get from those primary erosion along that, that erosion front of the boundary. And there's a large buffer area for the sediment to be held up or to, to be stored and then migrated again to the, the, the depot centers. So to investigate what's happening in each of these depot centers or the stratigraphy, I've increased the Badlands recorded time intervals from 100,000 to 5,000 years. And I've rerun the model for 1 million year time steps during each of these stages. So it's just a, a, a short time period to, to get a bit more detail about what's going on. So you can see in the early stage, you buy some of the smaller troughs are completely bypassed, but where they've captured the pre-existing drainage, there's the sediment supply to accommodation is much, much stronger and there's a, there's a lot more buildup. 
So in this, in this example, the scale bar goes from zero to three meters and that's the, the color of these layers through there. So if I step through to the mid stage, you can see that a lot more of the troughs are filled up. This is sort of indicating where there's this change from this, this lateral sediment supply to a more of a, an axial supply through the basin. And this kind of mirrors what we see in some of the rocks in the basin at the moment in the Otway Basin in that there's a, a lateral drainage system that's developed. Um, the, in the thickness of the layers, I've increased the time, the thickness scale here to five meters, but you can see there's some much thicker layers being deposited through here for a similar amount of accommodation that's being created. So there's, there's a higher variation. So in the late stage, the thing that kind of stands out that stands out here is that we're seeing much thicker layers that are deposited. The axial dep deposition is still present and there's a much, so there's much greater variability in the, 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 these deposited layers, sort of suggesting that potentially there's a, there's a much greater variability in how the sediment's supplied to the basin. So I'll just run through a quick animation of those, each of those stages here. This is close to the last slide. And you can see with that increased resolution, the lateral sort of deposition here, you can see this, this sort of, uh, I guess, axial along the middle of the trough through there, that deposition going on. And then if, even more so in the, uh, in, in the really late stages. So, so I guess in conclusion, where I'm, where I'm progressing with this work is that the numer numerical models are able to, to show this prediction between uh, the stratigraphy and how that relates to the, the source, reservoir and seal um, using this approach. And, and in the Otway Basin, it's starting to show that the results are similar to what we actually observe with the early stage isolated sub-basins that are more likely to be lacustrine uh, with a low sediment supply. The mid-stage axial transports of sediments is, is something that's been observed in well logs uh, and it's similar to what's been interpreted in the Sinrif sequence in the Otway. And the late stage of supply variation suggests an inc increased potential for lacustrine sequences, particularly in those downstream depot centers. Okay, thanks.